Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Christian Anna Horror back again. It's been a little bit, y'all. I apologize. Here's the deal. I am going through a phase right now where I'm, I was looking through for a new job. Um, as most of you should know, I did a transition to the oil field work, and it did not go as great as I wanted it to. I got in, and then a little while later, the bottom just fell out, and the money started creeping out, and... Um, Start looking for more work, and I got another job. Start tomorrow. Today's Sunday. Tomorrow's Monday. I start tomorrow. So y'all wish me luck on the job. Hope it all goes good. I really think it's gonna be a good opportunity for me. Um, I'm working in a plant, so the blue collar work, which I like to do. So y'all wish me luck on that. But let's. That's enough about that. You guys are here to hear. You guys are here for me to talk about Halloween, the curse of Michael Myers, and um, we're gonna combine two. We're going to combine two reviews today in this. We're going to talk about the uh, theatrical release, The Curse of Michael Myers, and Halloween 6, The Producer's Cut. Now, um, I'm using this as the template for the theatrical, and I'm using this as the template for the producer's cut. Just know that this this Japanese laser disc does not actually have the producer's cut scenes on it, but um, I just thought it looked good, and I wanted to show off this is, just, this is a Japanese Halloween 6 laser disc. All work on the bag is very cool, so I thought you guys would just enjoy that. Let's talk first about the theatrical cut. So this was the first film, I believe it was released by Miramax. They picked up the rights to Halloween. Um, Daniel Farrens was a fan who wrote the movie, we all know this. Um, and uh, Basically this movie went through a lot of hell to get made. Went through a lot of changes, um, a lot of cuts. Donald Pleasant's last performance was in this. Um, he was he, You could tell he was tired in the movie. He was old. He was really starting to unfortunately die, you know. And um, quite frankly, I think he died right after production uh, stopped. So it's a miracle that he made it through the movie. But he did so lovingly, and he did a fantastic job in the movie like he always does. Um, now, we'll stop talking about the movie. We all seen Halloween 6 versus Michael Myers. This is how I feel about it. Um, I still think that this movie has that Halloween feel. And now I know I've said that for most of them so far, but I'm gonna let you know right now. I don't feel that way about all of them. I personally don't feel that H2O has a Halloween theme feel season-wise. But we'll get to that. Um, I do think that Halloween, the curse of Michael Myers, has a good Halloween feel to it. I thought the performance everybody did in the movie was good. It wasn't too over dramatic. It wasn't too over the top. Um, George P. Wilbur returned for the movie, which really I loved him. His, his performance of Michael Myers was brute, uh, menacing, but not over the top. Run at you, gut you. As Michael Myers still very ghostly, slow. You know uh, all the things that I like about the style of Michael Myers with a hint of brutality in it, which I, I think it, it mixes great. The Halloween 6 mask is my favorite mask of the series. I think it has the most, it's kind of got like an evil, a slight evil grin to it. And I think that's, that's horrifying. Um, now obviously, if you ask me which, which uh, release do I prefer, it's going to be the producer's gut. Because this movie, even without producer's cut scenes added in when you watch it the theme of it with thorn and the curse it's already over the top i mean as far as what's compared to the previous halloween films so to actually see it truncated but with still but still with that theme halloween with it being over the top and being you know the thorn curse which is you know not what you expected at all you really just wanted to see like the producer's cut doesn't really put it that much more over the top. It just makes it more cohesive and enjoyable, in my opinion. Now, do I still enjoy the theatrical cut? Yes, I can still watch this movie um, any day of the week and enjoy every minute of it. Um, the characters are all good. Little side note, they asked uh, Howard Stern to be in this movie and be the DJ in that scene where they have the big party at Haddonfield and they interview the boy and the girlfriend about Halloween and Michael Myers. They ended up getting some actor named Barry Sims, I believe, but they did ask Howard Stern to do it, and he turned it down, and the reason being was he wanted his first movie to be his biopic, which ended up being Private Parts. So that's a little side note, but, um, I, uh, 
I don't really like the end fight scene a whole lot. Um, I don't think Michael Myers should have a fight scene per se in a movie. Not the way they did it here with just, you know, fighting back. I like the chase. I like the, the trickery to try to stop Michael, but not a straight on brutality fight the way they did it. Um, The ending is just a little, then the theatrical cut, the ending is just a little, really, I could use a little more, you know, so, I like, I don't mind endings that give me a question of what's to come next, or is there going to be something next, that's not it, I just really wanted a little bit more, I didn't feel like we resolved anything in Halloween, yes, in the Halloween Kirk My God, the theatrical cut, what I'm trying to get at is, I like, I like an ending that can, give me questioning and make me wonder, okay, now what's going on? But I want it to lead to the next chapter. And Halloween Curse of Michael Myers, the very ending of it, didn't really feel like we were leading to a next chapter, which is more pages of that chapter that we would see, if that makes sense. So um, that's really how I feel about the theatrical cut. Now we'll talk a little bit more about the producer's cut. The producer's cut, um, uh, the first time I watched it was when I got the Halloween I have it over there, the big Blu-ray box that, that uh, Spring Factory released and did a fantastic job on. Um, Producer's Cut, to me, is an awesome movie. Um, it's Like I said, the, the, the Thorn idea, it's already over the top, in my opinion. So when you actually get to see every essence of it and what they really intended, it doesn't really make it any more crazy to me, just more enjoyable, because I really get to see behind... It's almost like seeing behind the scenes of what Halloween curse of Michael Myers was, you know, to me now, the producer's cut is the definitive version, that is, if I was going to show somebody Halloween, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6, I would show them the producer's cut, because you're going to see exactly what the film makers, for the most part, were trying to do, um, you get a little bit more scenes with Donald Pleasance, which is, which is a treat, you know, um, because it, it just makes his essence live on and on, um, there was uh, different kill scenes. Jamie Lloyd didn't necessarily die in, uh, in the producer's cut. She lived a little bit longer. Um, there's scenes in the hospital. Um, the Thorn thing was was really creepy to me. The whole cult, the cults are scared the hell out of me. There's something about cults that just freaked me out. So the whole cult deal was just awesome. It was really scary. Um, the imagery in Halloween 6 had, uh, had some scenes that were very almost Egyptian-like in those, it looked like these tunnels where they're having this, going to sacrifice the baby and just really cool stuff, really cool stuff. Um, I really like the, 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 I really like the ending of this movie better when the curse is passed on to Donald and the character of what we, what we understand to be Michael is like leaving the building. But he still is evil. And that that could have really spun the series in a crazy direction. Maybe it's for the best that it did. Maybe it, you know. But you know, I think everything happens for a reason. There's a lot of fans for H2O. I'm a fan of H2O, you know. But um, the ending of Halloween Six, the producer's cut, really makes me wonder what the hell could have came next. But I really enjoyed the producer's cut, the definitive version, in my opinion, a great Halloween movie at the end of the day. You have to evolve. You have to start telling bits and pieces more. You can't just make the same Halloween over and over again with no answers to no questions, you know. And, you know, that's something I understand. Now, sometimes the next the next questions and answers aren't exactly in the path that you'd like to see it. But, you know, um, I think these movies are all still made out of love. And, and um, I think it shows. And, I love the producer's cut. It's one of my favorite installments, probably my second favorite installment. Now remember, what I think is my favorite, what I think is the best, is it is totally different. But my second favorite is the producer's cut of Halloween 6. So I'd love to know what you guys think about the producer's cut. I'd love to know what you guys think about the theatrical cut. Do you do you prefer, is there anybody who still prefers the theatrical cut over the producer's cut? I'd love to know that. Um, tell me anything you guys know about these movies that I might not know about, and uh, we'll have a discussion in the comment section. Next up, we'll do Halloween H2O, so guys, we will see y'all next time.